Hello, and welcome back to our OpenTK platform and tutorial series. My name is Syl, and today we're going to be looking at how to add tweening to our view class, as well as some overloads to our sprite batch class. As a side note, I like to use the word tweening because it's the first word I learned for that sort of behavior. However, it can also be referred to as easing or in-betweening. Whatever you call it, though, it's essentially just moving between two points in a smooth pattern over time. Now, the first thing I want to do is add a little snippet of code so that we can test our tweening once we got it set up. So in our game.cs, we're going to go to the constructor, and after the initialization of view, we're going to add mouse.button down plus equals, and then if we hit tab twice here in Visual Studios, it'll automatically add a function for us with the corresponding name and the right arguments. And we'll go ahead and get rid of this exception here. Now essentially all we did is we added an event handler to the opentk.mouse.button down event. So this function here that we just made will get called whenever a mouse button is pressed. And what we want to do in this function is we want to tell the view to move to the position that our mouse was pointing at. And as you can see our E input here has a position However, this position value is relative to where our view is at the moment, so we're going to need to transpose that to world coordinates, as I like to call them. And I generally like to make a function in our view class for that. So we're going to delete this. And before we do anything here, we're going to go to our view class. And up at the top, and I think I'll add it before the constructor here, we'll make a new function called public, and it's going to pass back a vector2 to, to world. And we'll get a vector2 input. And this function essentially just takes string coordinates and gives us world coordinates. And I'm not going to go in depth too much about how that works. However, essentially we're just undoing the transformations done by the transform matrix we create at the bottom of this class. And the hardest of those is the rotation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide the input by the zoom. So we'll do input divided by equals zoom. And we'll make sure we typecast this as a float. And then we're going to make two different vector2 variables. First one's going to be vector2, and I'm going to call it dx. And we're going to set it to a new vector2. And type cast as float, and for the x value we do math.cosine, and we'll pass it the rotation. And for the y value we'll type cast it as a float again, and do math.sine. And make sure it's sine without a g, and we'll pass it rotation as well. And then we're going to copy this line, and instead of dx we'll call it dy. And instead of just passing a rotation, we'll do a rotation plus math helper dot pi over 2. Make sure you copy that for both sine and cosine here. And then what we can do is we'll return this dot position plus dx times input dot x plus dy times input dot y. And that should give us world coordinates now. So now if we go back to our game.cs, we can initialize the vector2 variable here. And since e.position is a point variable, we're going to kind of convert it over to a vector2 here. So we'll do new vector2 e.position.x and e.position.y and then we need to make sure we subtract the center of the screen so we'll do pose minus equals new vector to this.width and this.height and divided by 2f at the end now we can convert it to world coordinates so we'll do pose equals view.2world we'll pass it in pose and then at the moment we can test this out without tweening so we'll do view.position equals pose. And if we go ahead and run this and click around, we should be able to move the view there. Sweet. So back in our view.cs, we're first going to add a public enum before the class here. So we'll do public enum, and I'm going to call this tween type. And this enum essentially is going to represent the different options we have for tweening. So for the first one, we'll do instant. Second one will be linear. Third one will be quadratic in out. Fourth one will be cubic, in, out. And the last one will be quartic, out. These make a little bit more sense later, but you don't really need to understand fully what they mean. So first order of business, we're going to change the position to a private variable. And we're going to add a public accessor for it. So we're going to do public vector2 position with a capital P. And we'll add a git and return position. We'll add a this dot just to make sure. So now we can only read our position variable through this public accessor here. And that's important because the update function is actually going to be controlling the actual position of our view. And instead we're going to add this function called set position, which will have a couple different overloads depending on what type of tweening you want. However, before we do that, let's add a few more variables here. And these are going to be private variables. First two are going to be private vector2 position go to and position from. And we'll also need to add a vi private variable to hold what type of tweening we're currently doing. So private tween type, I'll just do lowercase tween type. 
and we also need two private integers and we'll call them current step and tween steps and I'll explain these a bit more as we go on but for now let's go ahead and add that function I'm gonna put it after update here we're gonna do public void set position and for an input we'll do vector2 new position and this will be our first overload of the function this one's just gonna instantaneously set the view position without any tweening so do this dot position equals new position this dot position from equals new position and this dot position go to equals new position and for the tween type we'll set it equal to tween type dot instant as well as we'll set the current step to zero and the tween steps to zero the reason I add this overload is because I still want that functionality just to instantaneously set the position in case I want to control the position of the camera from somewhere else. We'll go ahead and copy this and add another overload. And for inputs, we'll do a tween type type, and we need an integer number of steps. And so instead of tween steps equals zero, we'll do tween steps equals num steps. And then instead of explicitly setting it to in tween type dot instant, we'll do tween type equals type. And that's all we really need to do on our set position functions. And now we'll get to a little bit of the meat of the tweening. And that's going to be in our update function. So we're first going to do if current step is less than tween steps. And we'll put some stuff there in just a second. We'll do else. If not, we'll go position equals position go to. So if it is less than, then we need to find an in-between position that it needs to be at at the moment, depending on the ratio between current step and tween steps. So we'll add a switch statement here. And we'll switch on the tween type here. So first case is going to be case tween type dot linear. And then we'll copy this case. We'll paste it three times. And change it to quadratic and out. Cubic and out. And quartic out. And then make sure before we forget after the switch statement here we're going to put current step plus plus. And I actually spotted a mistake here in our set position function with the tween type overload. Instead of setting position from to our new position, we actually need to set it to our original position that we're moving from. So we need to cut this and move it up to first. And then instead of new position, we set to the current position before the position is reset to the new position. Now we're going to be making functions for each of these tween types. I'll go ahead and fill out these case statements and then add those functions. So we're going to do position equals position from plus position go to minus position from times get linear and for the input we'll typecast it as a float here so that we retain our floating point numbers and we'll do current step divided by tween steps obviously get linear doesn't exist at the moment but we're gonna create it in just a second right now we're gonna copy this line and paste it into our other case statements here and change them from get linear to something equivalent to what the case is so get quadratic out Perfect. Now let's go actually make those functions. I'm not going to be explaining too much exactly how these functions work. Essentially they're just going to be returning a value between 0 and 1 from a value that we passed between 0 and 1. And if you were to graph these as actual functions in math, you'll kind of see a visual representation of how the view is going to be moving. So after our set position functions, I'm going to do public float get linear. And linear 1 is going to be the easiest to understand. As input we'll need a float t. So the linear 1 is just literally going to return t. I'll go ahead and copy this. We'll make the quadratic in that one. This one's going to be quite a bit more complicated here. In parentheses, it's going to be t squared divided by, in more parentheses, it's going to be 2 times t times t minus 2 times t plus 1. Essentially, it's t squared over 2t squared minus 2t plus 1. And then we'll copy our quadratic function again. And this one, we're going to add an extra t on the numerator. Change the 2s to 3s. And that should be good to go. And lastly, our quartic out function is going to be a little bit different. This one's going to be negative in parentheses t minus 1 to the fourth. So t minus 1 times t minus 1 times t minus 1 plus 1. And I'll make sure I paste these in the video description so you guys can get them. Looks like I forgot to rename this one here. And now our view class should be good to go. So if we go back to our game.cs, we need to change this view.position line here. Since this no longer works, since position's a private variable, what we need to do instead, we need to do view.setPosition. I'm going to use the second overload here. We'll do new position. We'll set it to pose. For tween type, we'll try quadratic in out first. 
and we'll do like 60 steps. This essentially means that we want it to go to this position in 60 steps using the quadratic in out tweening. Perfect, let's see how this looks. So if we run our game here, and we click around, very nice. Much better than the instantaneous moving there. And I will encourage you guys to mess around with these functions, see what they do. Maybe go find some other different types of tweening functions. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this tutorial with that. And hope to see you guys in the next one. Boing. Boing. Boing.